beautiful people. More life, more blessings. You know the vibes. We outside even though we inside. Thanks. Full of love, podcast, new episode, same vibes. You know me, Eric Buddy Davis. Here with my partner in crime, my confidant. Mr. South Sniffy. Yes, sir. What's good, baby? How you feeling? Man, you know me feeling good, feeling great, feeling great, feeling good, and we hope you are too. So, right back at it, you know how we do for those listening on Apple Music or Spotify. We like to check our temperature before getting into, you know, the details of the show. So, Mr. Sniffy, how's your week, man? Been good, man. Busy. Just locked in the new mural. Had a uh, meeting today at the uh, Baltimore Washington Medical Center. New mural alert. First mural in the hospital coming soon. So I'm, I'm pleased and hyped about that. And uh, holidays right around the corner. So holiday def- season. Definitely stressed. True. You know, uh, financially, man, got to get it together and get these kids right, man. But it's been a uh, sh- all types of bills coming out of nowhere and unforeseen accidents. So. Right. It's gonna be a tough holiday, but I'm grinding hard, so that's how I'm feeling, man. How about you? I'm feeling good, man. You know, I like most people, I might not have as much Christmas stress, because uh, one of the perks of having a non-verbal autistic child ain't asking for shit. <laughs> so uh, that's a part of the win, but at the same time, my son does use his little box, so when he does want something, he does request it. But um, you know me, man, I love the holiday season. It's not Bud Lever no more, but it's still Sag season for all my Sag babies. Um, shout out to everybody that celebrated Bud November with me. And for all those getting ready for all the Christmas holidays, whether you celebrate Hanukkah or whatever it may be, celebrate with your family, celebrate with your loved ones, gift those, the gift of love, if not anything. Because I hope y'all are checking them kids' grades, man, because uh, I'll be seeing a lot of parents getting their kids a lot of toys bragging right. on social media. We know your kid can't read or, you know, causing trouble in school, man. So make sure they gifts match their fucking attitude. You know they're going to be punching on the PS6 the same night. But either way, it is what it is. So, let's get into topic number one for the night. So, we're not going to talk about who our guest is yet, but I think that this topic is the perfect topic for him. And the topic of tonight's episode is for the love of ownership. Ownership. When I think about owners, I think about people like Jay-Z, okay. Shaquille O'Neal, okay. Bosses, Prince, RP, and Oprah. Okay. Four different backgrounds and professions, okay. but they all had ownership. Okay. Prince owned and took a lot of attention to his logo. Remember that? I remember when he went into the artist line. You know, ownership. Shaquille O'Neal, he's a person that has bought companies that were either going out of business, more than likely than starting his own, so that's right. a form of ownership. You got somebody like Jay-Z who just constantly worked through the ranks and understood the business. Now you know, has, business, man. Yeah, business, now has man. ownership. Uh, different companies, Thanks. partnerships, and he owns his own stuff. So Thanks. that's perfect samples of for the love of ownership to me. Gotcha. So the way I look at ownership is more so, what do you do to make sure you can sustain what you're trying to own? A lot of people try to go into things because it makes you look like a boss, or it makes you feel like a boss. But the worst thing to do is to step into a space that you're not prepared to really, really take on. So when I look at ownership, I look at more so where do you plan to take your product? Or where is it that you want to, how do you want people to view what you're producing and what you're putting out? So when I look at something like yourself, for instance, I've said this, I think on another episode, you are someone, one of the few people I know that you don't check in, you don't clock in, nowhere. Every day, every night, you're on your own schedule. To me, that's ownership. You own your time, you own your freedom. I think we all want to strive for financial freedom because I feel like when most people say they want money, they really just want to own their time because money allows you to take care of your people. It allows you to take care of yourself. So when I think of owners, I think of the same people you think of, but I also think of the individual independent owners, people that have small brands, the mom and pop shops, the people that may strive to one day own a whole market, but right now they're just holding down the corner in Brooklyn or they're holding down a small area in town, downtown Annapolis, or something like that. So I think ownership has a lot of different values and a lot of different ways to take on. But I just think at the end of the day, proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. And I think to be an owner, you just got to do your research and your details and know where you're trying to take your business. Two of the notes that I had down for ownership that stood out to me was dedication and sacrifice. Hmm. And one of the things that I've encountered since becoming my own owner and having ownership is tax time. 
when I hear people talk about taxes and I'm getting taxes back, shit, I'm worried about how much money I gotta pay back to Uncle Sam. Like, awesome. that's one of the sacrifices you make becoming an owner. You don't get taxes no more. You kicking out the bread. So, dedicating to your books, to making sure you dot your t, you dot your eyes and crossing your t's, Facts. going through your books or accounting, whatever it may be. When tax time come, Uncle Sam ain't playing. So you know it's a lot of things that you have to get used to and get acclimated to when you become an owner, but. That's more what we're going to talk about in this this episode. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, uh, we're going to throw group headings tonight because we want to get into our guests. But at the same time, take the time of trying to own anything. And that's into buying a home, LLCs for your business. Do the research. Make sure everything is in order before you take on any type of things that could backfire on you in the long haul. Because don't do something. Don't shine for grand. Don't shine for the book. Shine for your family, shine for your legacy. And the best way to do that is building something sustainable. Be a real owner. Like at least say, be boss. Mm -hmm. So let's keep it moving. And I'm gonna shift it to you because we got our first sponsor highlight of the night. And uh, you got someone special that you wanna shout out, so I'll give the floor to you. Well, actually our special uh, sponsor highlight for the night is GVO Studios. Mm -hmm. For you that don't know what that is, that's Good Vibes Only Studios located in Annapolis, Maryland, off of Gibraltar. Off of Gibraltar, you know what I mean? The Gibraltis! <laughs> Dope ass studio where you can go in, not only record music, podcast space, doing photo shoots, and speaking of photo shoots, GVO Studios right now has a special going on in partnership with Christian Smooth for the holidays. So if you got family, y'all wanna be beautifully dressed together, matching outfits, that's the perfect place to go and get your photos taken. They got a $150 special which includes a 60 minute session, uh -huh. 20 edited photos, uh -huh. behind the scenes footage. Check. This is going on all December. Um, you book it, they book it now and you uh, go ahead and reserve your spot at gdosound.com. So again, that's today's sponsor highlight, GDO Studios. They also have uh, retail clothing available inside where you can get some fresh GDO clothes. If you don't know that mascot, that logo has a nice back. So if you feeling the back vibes, that's what you're gonna get. Dope designs, all unique. Make sure y'all check them out and happy holidays. And I'm just rubbing my head like Birdman. Go ahead and book that Playboy. <laughs> Go ahead and holler at my man Breezy Playboy. But yes, great sponsor highlight. Shout out to GVO Kennels and also No Dead Be Dads. But we're going to get into that a little bit later. So moving forward, love to not love. Mm -hmm. Let's get right into it. So for those who are listening, Spotify, Apple, who, doesn't, who do not watch us on YouTube, Love Tonight Love is where we highlight something that is a little bit fun, a little bit serious, but at the end of the day, we love something, but we also love to not love it. On this word, we blink out the H-A-T-E word. I won't say it, I'll spell it. So instead of saying to you H-A-T to love something, we love to not love something. And first off for me, it's off-brand sodas. <laughs> I remember the first time my mother bought me a Dr. Perkin. I still feel away. And shout out to anybody, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do when you go to the grocery store, save money, whatever. But please don't come to any of my events that I invite you to with no Dr. Perkies, no shots, that's what they call. None of them joints. Keep it. Hold on to it for yourself. Can I chime in on that? I'm mad they ain't a quarter no more. There used to be a quarter on Safeway. Now, no name soldiers cost you a dollar fifty for a can. It's crazy. Inflation. My first love to not love is Tesla and Elon Musk. Oh, damn. The new whippers out, they look dope, but they got robots coming. This I mean, I love what I'm saying. But I love to not love the disruption he doing in the industry, man. So Tesla, you on my list. Changing game, you know. Okay, these fake judge shows are my second one. <laughs> Steve Harvey's a judge now. Like I used to coming up in the age, I was one of the kids that watched wrestling. I used to think it was for real. And Stephen A. Smith got a judge show coming out, I believe. I would actually watch that, but he should have been a judge. But yeah, man, I used to think Judge Joe Brown and Judge Judy was real. Until I seen Judge Joe Brown, he grew up with BMF. This man ain't a damn lawyer. And then I see Judge Judy, I don't even know what her origin story is, but shout out to real judges and real law system people because even though it's fucked up, I shout out to the people that actually get good people off and sentence to people that are actually out here fucking up society. So shout out to all you fake ass judges, but do what you gotta do to get your brain. Buddy mad at y'all because he told y'all in the first episode he felt like he should be a judge. So yeah, he yeah, felt like he should take y'all's Sorry, I don't hate him, love him. My second love to not love is uh, the, some of these new NFL rules being enforced and okay. fines. I'm getting tired of watching the game. Okay. Even when it's not my team, I find myself ready to throw the remote through the TV from some of the egregious calls going sure. on. 
the NFL, man. No fun league. That's what y'all turning it into. They just trying to save lives. That's all. <laughs> all lives matter in the NFL. <laughs> um, but my last one is really, I love the hell out of you, but I got to keep you for the segment. So I love to not love me some sexy red, man. Shout out to St. Louis. Listen here. She's a wild ass gangster. I just found out what ski eating means. Growing up, obviously, I don't know if y'all had like people with scoliosis in y'all middle school and shit. And like, oh, you got scoliosis, you know. Oral sex is what we used to think. So when I hear ski, I'm thinking ski, ski. Low John type shit. She's actually sliding on niggas. She's gangster. If you see me, something, something, ski. If your baby daddy owe me some money, ski. All that type of shit. I just want to say I love her, a little gangster, ratchet ass. Shout out to Sexy Red. She's taking ownership of what she do. She's staying on business, like King say. And um, I love to not love all of the things that come with the type of lifestyle she lives. But I love that she's authentically herself each and every day. So shout out to you, Seth. Big sexy. And my last love to not love. They probably gonna hate me after this. Who was that? LeBron haters. I'm not oh, even the biggest LeBron fan, but I, to I can't find myself hating on him. I do not. Like when LeBron, you know, complains about calls, that's the worst thing. But you find, I find people all across the internet that's constantly just bringing up the wildest shit about LeBron. And as we saw, your man, he may have doped, whatever. <laughs> he, may, he must have had flashbacks from LeBron, LeBron dunking, shooting threes on his ass, and just punishing him throughout his whole career. Right. And that's why he finally found the chance. Call him a bitch or say he was bitches. I think he along that post of LeBron in the bathroom. I told you if I was LeBron, bro, I would have said some wild shit to that man. Hey, I'm like, the man. only nigga bitching is you on nail on, nigga. Just something crazy. You didn't want to walk on the court on me, but LeBron haters, man. Y'all got respect the man game. Since he stepped into the league, he's been dominating, holding his own, uplifting players. Giving players better situations, man. Respect the man. Respect his game. Respect the king. Y'all already know how I feel about the king. Greatest ever. And I'll leave that there. So, shine the light service. Let's go. Who we shine the light on today, son? I wanted to shine the light on Bill Petaway. That's Bill so Petaway is music producer in the, in the music industry from Annapolis, Maryland. Part of the old school clique of record execs. That's right. If y'all don't know who Bill Petaway is, he has connections with Millie Vanilli, who actually has a premiere movie about to drop and uh, just pretty much telling you the whole story of how they started out. If you don't know who Millie Vanilli is, that's the first group in music industry history to be caught lip singing. And uh, you know, so I guess the movie is really gonna break that down. But I wanted to shout out Bill because, you know, for the people that's doing music in our city and in Maryland and in the DMV, he's one of the pioneers for black people to be in the industry and make moves you know to make it accessible for us to get in the game and uh it's just sad but i will say the sad part about this that i see about a lot of people from annapolis you know you gotta get away and bill when he got on he got away man he's doing it big in florida right now but if you follow him on social media you can see he's real close with timberland swiss beats house is nice and he's constantly doing something man so i wanted to shout out bill for being a pioneer in the music industry and represent for annapolis Shout out Bill Pelley. Yeah, man, I just want to say thank you for being a source of motivation. Uh, my uncle, Joseph Jr., JJ Bad, famous, uh, he told me about you growing up and just uh, the work y'all have done together and just uh, how genuine of an individual you, you are and how passionate you are about your work. So um, I don't, I know people like to hate on people that make it and go away, but at the end of the day, you got to, like I said about ownership, if you know that to sustain your business or to sustain your product, it takes going away so you can have a peace of mind so you can be creative do what you gotta do because if your home is really your home it's gonna always be there and the people that love you and support you will never turn their back on you so i just want to say shout out to one of the most successful and um a few times i've met you down to earth people in annapolis maryland shout out to super producer bill padaway we hope to have you on the show one day my brother and you know speaking of record producers our next guest yes you sir know, he just happened to own the studio that was highlighted earlier, man. So let's go ahead and get to the introduction. You ready to get into it? Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So we are here, Do It For The Love podcast, and we have our first guest of the evening, Mr. Corey McGee, a.k.a. Flawless Breezy. Yes, sir. Uh, brother, yes, brother, sir. brother, brother, brother. Do appreciate, appreciate your time. For bringing, man, ownership, speaks, all speaks, speaking speaks. of ownership, this is an owner right here of many businesses, a nonprofit, and we already know your time is valuable. So like I said, we appreciate your time. But uh, all these interviews with the Door for the Love podcast, pretty much we like to get into the who, what, when, and where of your career and your journey. 
So we're gonna start with the who. Buddy, what's the first who question you got? So I'm gonna keep it real simple for you. Who is Corey Flawless Breezy McGee? Um, Corey Flawless McGee, um, he's from Annapolis, he's 28, he has four kids. Everything I do is for my kids. Okay. That's the most part about me. All right, good. So my question is, uh, um, and this may be the same answer, but who do you do it for? I mean, I, my kids, mm -hmm. my family. Because without my family, I wouldn't be able to do everything anyway. Like, I got a great support system. Mm -hmm. like, I, I travel a lot, you see, I don't, I don't got no problems or nothing like that. So, so with, with a man, you being a man who wears many hats, who do you want people to see? When they see court, a father, a father, father for the most part. Mm -hmm. I feel like most of the people that follow me is for fatherhood. So, like if I post father content, foo, everything skyrockets. I post music guys, okay, right. but more so the fatherhood. That's what most people follow me for. People love the kids. Yeah. So I actually have like a who B side to that. So who outside of your children inspires you to be an owner? Like from your kennels to your dad line to the studio, who inspired that as far as if there's a person that you could pinpoint or somebody that you know was a mentor? Tough question. I like it. Because I'm like the first, like one of the first in the family okay. to be like the owner of something. Okay. So I take care of everybody. I take gotcha. care of literally everybody. So gotcha. I don't know. I guess it was me having kids young that just motivated me. Like, if you don't never own them, you always gonna live check to check. So. Thanks. So gotcha. what, what inspired you to be an artist as far as music? Goes? Music? I never wanted to be an artist, okay. which is funny. That's funny. I, just, I just love music. Yeah, so. explain that to so, me. So, the person that makes albums that you yeah, so actually want to do it. See, which is crazy. So my brother, like, you know, of course, we led to, led, we used to work, like, we are friends, best friends. So they used to go to the studio a lot. And at this point, I'm, of course, I'm the money. So. When I got involved, I'm just paying for studio time. I'm sleeping there. I'm just buying all the albums and going to sleep in the studio. But I, was, I got the air for music. I love music, so. Right. They like, um, one brand, like, man, you should make a song. Made a song, and then people gravitate to me. Like, I guess I got another avenue. Let me, <laughs> let me do this. Right. But then I actually made, I was like, nah, this ain't it. But then I actually made like some good music, and then you know I like what, it now. Yeah, you know what's crazy about that is some of the best artists have gotten to the point where they are and have the most respect in fans and it's always happened to be an artist who didn't have the, the natural passion for it somebody that just kind of stumbled into it so that's awesome that a person like you with that dedication got into music because i definitely think that you inspire a lot of artists your age and some of the older ones my age a little older to keep going like you're the definition of that bro you constantly work and, that, and that's why i tell them like I, you see i post all the time like I ain't the best artist, I ain't the best, well, I ain't the best rapper around here by far. Right. But I work harder than you, man. Mm -hmm. I work harder than y'all. So it's like, hard work, I'll be talented. All the time. It's proof. An early bird get the worm and the hard work will always yes. win. Some way, somehow they're going to find the avenue. So when you speak on your different talents and the different things that you own and the different things that you're into, what out of them, because we know you love your kids, what thing that you own that brings the most out of you creatively? Like what is what takes the most work? Hmm. Clothing is a hassle. Okay. Because it's like you can be delayed so much. Like I can want something for winter time and then might be delayed because they got so many crazy there's so many holidays in these other countries and stuff and then it's already hot outside when the when the sweatsuits come. Fact. So it's like it's a gamble, so it's like you gotta really be on point. Like you gotta really be seasons ahead before you even drop something. Yeah, that gym for all the people that's listening. I wanted to back yeah, up yeah. a bit because you know we understand what he's saying the lingo, but a lot of people may not. So what you're talking about is the manufacturing process. Yes, 100. percent So without giving people too much detail, explain to them kind of how you got into the manufacturing process. I guess to do anything that you want to speak on about that as far as clothing goes. Because y'all out there who want to step into the clothing game, you got to understand it's levels. You got yes. people that's making it in a house, mm -hmm. right in the basement, and then you got people that's too busy for that. Right. So, 100%. so, what's crazy and what's funny, 
my first couple like logos and my first like mock-ups was made by Seth. <laughs> he actually Why made my first stuff. Yeah, he made my first stuff. So I'm like, boom, all right, now I see the process. I see the process, I got the blueprint now. So I'm like, all right. So now I'm like, all right, let me come up with some designs, okay. like some more. Then my cousin actually drew up my official logo that I use now, he drew it. And then I got a digital. You might have digital, I, digitized I it. Yeah. yeah, so he did that too, so I'm like, I don't know from there, it was just ball game because I clothed it. And of course, I worked with Boo. I did fashion shows. My, like, I modeled before I did anything. So, right. I did all that with Boo. He, like, of course, I went to the proms and stuff. He made all my clothes. I went and bought the fabric. He stitched it up. So, it was like, teamwork from there. Um, but, I don't know. It's, the clothing process, it, it's hard. Like, it's, um, I would recommend the people, like, you can see the most if you do it yourself 100%. Manufacturers. It's hard. It's the best way to go because you can get everything mass, produ mass produced and but you're not in control. But you're not in control. That's an ownership conversation. Yeah. You don't own something. You're not in control. You know somebody else talks it. Yes. And the machines that they use cost a lot of money. So right. it's not easy to do. So it's like also respect your business partners and people you work with in right. ownership. Your network is your net worth. So right. you just hear these gentlemen spoke on their business together several times. And obviously in good faith because we're here today working with each other. So. Make sure you connect with the right people on your path. So I'm gonna skip over my what and go into my why. Why GVO Sound Studios? You could have brought anything to the city. You could have did anything with the money, with grants or whatever. You brought a studio. Yeah. So Annapolis, Maryland. Tell the people why. Because there's no luxury studio in Annapolis, Maryland. I, if well, I just after I opened my studio, I found out about when I did. I never knew it was that way. It's no, called the one on West Street. But it's like it's a it's an older guy. Okay. It's made like for him, I believe. Right. I, like. It's a, it's a big, big money studio. Put that on all the people in the studio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but I never knew, I never knew it was there. So I feel like it was no, it was no luxury studio in Annapolis. Um, is it for us though? Yes. No, it's, the other one. Is it for us? No. Okay. I don't think it's for us. No. Gotcha. For so so you created yeah. something. So I, cre I created something for us. Okay. And me, for the most part, because I do the nonprofit stuff, I, I mainly did it for the kids. Like, okay, one, all that kids are driving to Baltimore to go to the studio. They used to go to 410 Pasadena that shut down, so you gotta drive 40 minutes to an hour just to go record music. It's a place safe for kids. I don't allow smoking or nothing, so you can you can come create, bring your kid there, you can get your photo shoot done at the same time. I got videographers, I got photographers, I got everything you need there. One stop shop. One stop shop. I love it. I love it. I know um not switch, I don't wanna bounce around too much. We can get back into the clothing conversation, but a word that you mentioned a few times here is fatherhood. Yes. And uh, we briefly mentioned the No Babies Club. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about why you were um, passionate to start that nonprofit and what's the base of it and what's the purpose of it? Gotcha. So, for the most part, I started because I got four kids and I know, of course, everything I do revolves around them. So, but I also see I'm from the hood, I'm still in the hood. So, it's like I see all these kids. And I might see their father walking down the street. I might see their mother walking down the street. But these kids is not, they, they're not able to do the things that my kids are doing. Like my kids travel, my kids do this, my kids do that. But I'm like, these kids should be able to do the same thing whether it's their parents or if us as a community can come together and help them. Mm -hmm. So that's really my thing. I want everybody to be, they say equality. Well, we need equality for kids. I don't really care about adults at all, 100%. Adult, you can, you can retrain a kid to do positive things. Adult, their mind is made up, so whatever. It's crazy. Whatever they with, they with. Adults, we seem more flaky sometimes, especially with opportunities like that too. So I could, I could understand fully hurt going in with the kids and, and making that shit best. Right, yep. I know y'all like to say all of you parents, y'all like to say FTK, but Breezy say FTA. Fuck them adults. Yeah, I don't fuck with them. <laughs> um, <laughs> so did you have any uh, who, what, when, or why questions you wanted to get into before we moved into rapid fire? Um, yeah, I did want to ask, you know, another thing we didn't touch on about you, which I see a lot through your social media, is the fact that you travel a lot. Yes, sir. Um, so what interests you more, the time you spend um, creating or the, the time that you spend traveling? And I admire your travel journeys, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Tra traveling. I, I, bro, if I can, I tell my dad, bro, I tell like, if I can just quit and travel, that's all I'm going to do right now. Right. 
the quality, like, okay, I'm going to third world country, the quality of life there is better. Can you tell some of the people the places that you've been and the work you do there? Um, so I've been to the Philippines, Guatemala, Egypt, Tokyo, um, Bali, uh, been in like 10 places, I can't, I can't even so think about it. For the people that probably never traveled the world, how hard is it to get your passport, how much was it? Passport, easy to get, you just go to the post office, take a little photo, Hundred, like 150 like 180 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, 180. 180. You get an expedited extra 40 or something like that. Fun fact, I just started traveling out the country last year. So I just oh, I, I, many places. Yeah, I just got my passport. And right That's now crazy. I got about five old places booked right now that I'm going in the next two months. So That's amazing. Max out your so, potential, people. Yeah. If you got, you know, you become an owner, you start to make yourself and give yourself enough income to do this type of stuff. Yep, you know what I mean? man. And for the most part, like when I go to the Philippines and Guatemala, I actually want to do a mission trip. So I do work a nine to five still. I still I do health. I work in healthcare. So man, we want to help. Yeah. So we um we go out there. We do like seventy to hundred free. We doing surgery for free out there for the um, five people. So that's amazing work. So bro. just give back. That's not something small. I know that's easy to say, but to go and do free work for people like for those who don't know, I work at a dental school and stuff like Mission of Mercy, mm -hmm. but the trips they take to the Dominican Republic. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Missions of Mercy, Medical Mission of Mercy. That's who I was with in Guatemala, and my next one to Philippines in February. That's who I'm with too. That's crazy. Yeah. I got lucky with the dental school. We got yeah. all, yeah, something we, else. We, no, we did dental. We did dental in Guatemala just now. Right. A lot of dentists that live out there. So gotcha. Yeah, no, that's, that's fire, bro. That's, that's, I got hooked you up with UMSOD. Like, yeah. Uh, Okay, you know, yeah. just to make that connection. I don't like that. Before I go on a rabbit fire, I did actually have one more question for you. This is more like a win question. When did you discover that you were different than most of the black men at, in Annapolis, Maryland? Because I'm going to tell you my first experience from seeing you, I see the face piercings, mm -hmm. I see the, cut, the hair color, I see all this difference, and I'm like, who is this nigga? Mm -hmm. I, and I'm, but I love it though because I'm different, and I like the fact that, like, and he seems that he walks in it effortlessly. It doesn't seem like he's trying to be something he saw. It seemed like it naturally hit you. So did you just naturally always been creative or it was a moment when you said, I'm going this way because everybody's going that way? No, I feel like I've always been different because you know, I'm no girl. I'm wearing, we, as, I'm wearing skinnies out there. I'm, everybody else got, this, they got big fat daddies on. I'm wearing skinnies, so, but the same people that laughed at me, talked about me, I see them this day, I'm like, oh, you, you was laughing, I'm wearing skinnies, and you got on tight pants tighter than me right now. <laughs> Kirk, he like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's cheaper to be yourself. That's how I would say. I'm, I'm going to be me regardless. And for those who don't know, Annapolis Gardens is one of the six hoods that we have in Annapolis, Maryland. I know you guys, we just got both. Is it seven? I know somebody got the motive. Who the seven? God, we'll go through the list. I mean, God just kind of got more. We didn't gentrify this more. We didn't rebuild this. We 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 kind of got. I don't want to take. I don't want to take the credibility away <laughs> from none of the neighborhoods that we grew up to, man. Don't let them gentrify us and take them out of uh, our memories, man. The seven hood. The seven hood is Green World. <laughs> That's where we from. <laughs> but um, so yes. We gonna get into rapid fire questions for those that once again Apple listeners, Spotify listeners. This is when we hit our guests. Quick questions, don't overthink it. Some funny, some serious, but we get to know the personality of our guests a little more besides of the who, what, when, where, and why. And somebody like Corey, aka Flawless, as, as Buddy said, is different and unique, so we wanted to make sure we, we come a little bit <laughs> filled with these questions so you can get to know him a little bit more than what we just spoke about. All right. So you think you're ready, Mom? Nope, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. No. So you first me first. I, I can jump it off. Jump it off. All right, so our first rapid fire question of the day is, when traveling, what's something you always have to take with you outside of your cell phone and money? Good question. That is a good question. A uh, portable charger. Okay. Hmm. Can't be found I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure it's probably less outlets in some of these countries. Yeah, and a adapter because they got different. Oh. They got different outlets, so you wow. need a, you need a travel adapter also because okay. they got different outlets, like in London and stuff. It's, it's not, it's it's not three prongs. No. Yeah. Fun fact. They got like, the two, like some of the places got just like the two little dots like this. Like Benny the Butcher said, blood talk different. Yeah, yeah. Blood, blood talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, my first question to you is going to be, if you could choose an era to live in besides your own, what era would it be? The time when gender rules was going on. Okay. What that's like the, the 80s or better when, when people actually stayed together. Okay. The, the like era, the actual structure, like, like the structure, era, the structure like, era. When that when that grandparents would have got together. 
God, they could they still together. So 70s, Yeah, 80s. he's running a top. Yes, today is outside. What? <laughs> I think you already answered this question off camera, but let's see if it's the same. Who is your least favorite rapper of all time? Least favorite? Of all time. Not just somebody you dislike, like of all okay. time. I don't like Jay-Z. I don't like Jay-Z. And it's not that he a horrible rapper. <laughs> I just don't like him. It's just he's just not for me. From one I like him as a businessman, but not as a rapper. So you say from one entrepreneur to another, we might gotta hear this one. Might not spend a block. And from one fellow sash to another, flawless his words on my hope. <laughs> I can't speak for But you. no, everybody's entitled to their opinion. It's crazy because I'm gonna show you this and I'm gonna switch it up because look at what I was about to ask you. And I'm not gonna ask you that. You so still ask me. No, I'm gonna you say this. The people need that. As an artist alone, as an artist alone, uh -huh. Lil Wayne and Drake. Lil Wayne. Okay. I didn't even want to ask you why, but I might spend a block on that. So, um, you want to make the biggest remix of the year. Who you featuring on the song and who making the beat? Making the beat? I'm going to try to find somebody local. Okay. But, feature? And not Lil Wayne. It gotta be Drake or Wayne. <laughs> I'm, I've always been like Young Money. So, me too. Me too. so like I'm, I've always been like Young Money fan. So it gotta be somebody out there. And it's gonna be the top dog. But I'm gonna go with Drake because anybody that go with Drake. <sighs> See, and the thing is, it's all if you can keep well, that momentum. Drake, because Drake, cause, cause you, the Drake effect. You gonna you gonna get there, but you gotta have stuff to back it up. Understand it. Yes. Uh, I was thinking. I was ready to bump what you said and say the one single that Drake did a feature on it was fire. Uh, like Shelby Drive 205 or something. Uh, um, yeah, Black Boy JB. Black. Haven't heard from him. So and he all. actually had a dope follow up single without yes, Drake. So yes, he did. That's to his point. As long as you've been consistent, you mm -hmm. gonna grasp. I like it. Had me looking for JB. He's not the best fitter, but I like his and voice. I got like his own his energy. And the, the dancing. Oh, yeah. And so. I, I, you can tell. I love looking at videos of people in their city and seeing their city vibe. With I, see, I see certain people that love for you. I'm, I'm just gonna tap in. Gotcha. Um, I'll make this my last rapid fire question. I had two more, but I'll make this my last one. And there's no right or wrong answer to this one. How old is Morgan Freeman? I feel like he's a hundred. <laughs> man, man, I never seen him young. So, <laughs> no, y'all die. No, when, when, yeah, like, like I've never seen him young. But y'all gotta think I'm young. I like, I'm, wrote, I'm younger than most people. That they they think I'm older. I'm not. I'm young. I literally wrote that question just looking for old as fuck. Yeah, I'm like, bro, he's like, he's saying all this. I don't know his age. I saw him the other day on TV and everything. Bro, like, I've talked to Morgan Freeman. I've never seen him young. Ever. Morgan a goat. I just had to ask that question. He's like the one person that's like been around forever, but no one knows like a Morgan Freeman origin story. I've never even heard him tell yeah. I've never even seen a young Denzel Washington on the Nah, I see the young Denzel Washington. Ah. Go check out Rick Shane. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. So you said that was your last, last one. one. So I'll end mine by asking you what is the biggest lesson you've learned since becoming a father? Good. Biggest lesson I learned is you gotta actually listen to your kids. Listen to what they listen to what they want to do and what they actually thinking and saying, and more so to what you allow them to watch. Cause they, like you said, they're sponges. So whatever they see, they're gonna want to do. Mm -hmm. And like right now, my biggest trial right now, my son, my oldest son, is in middle school now. He used to be top of his class. He went to private, started off in private. I mean, you would think he's a gangster now. Oh right my now. God. Going down, like, and it's not even that grade's good, but he's just getting in trouble. And then me and his mom, like, like, what have you been a follower for? Mm -hmm. Oh, we, oh, we had to do with influence. Oh, no, but we had a conference with the teacher. Teacher said he the ringleader. Oh, he the one who the show. Oh, yeah. oh they, they following him. Oh, but it's like, I, I love him because he, he followed, like, I don't know, he he just like me 100%. So. Yeah, but now I would say that was like, a good time to to catch that and yeah, that's, that's, what you're and, doing. and that's what that's what we're doing now. We're trying to figure out the best way to get like the man. He just he got his hair just his hair just like mine. He just dyed his hair red the other day, and he just like he done been in the movie recorded like two songs so far. Right. So that's awesome. Man. Do you so think I'm, it's a bit of unforeseen parental influence that he? And I'm not just speaking to you, just in general. Oh no, I think it's it's hundred percent probably me too because he hundred percent like he's with his mom majority of the time. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I gotta be, like I would tell her, I gotta be, like I used to come to the crib every day, but I'm, I'm way more busy and I can't come there every day. And then, 
it's multiple cribs to go to. I got four kids. I got three baby moms, three different baby moms. So and that's like, no shade to the moms out there either, because sometimes y'all, be, y'all be taking to offense when we say our kids act different when they with y'all, but they did. That, 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 it's true, and it's to the point of that's why fathers are important. This is yes. why no deadbeats is important. Right. Yes. Black fathers are necessary. Yes. Shout out to the side. So, but, yeah, 100%. I would yeah. say I got to get back more active, so I, I blame myself for it. So it's like, it is what it is. Yeah. It's going to be corrected, fixed, but it's me. I got, I got to be there, but, respectful. but working all day and then at the studio all night, it's, it's hard. So it just, that was the biggest thing for me was balancing time. Like, like one of my kids' mothers, she, you did it, you think you this, that, and the third because you just paying for everything. Which in reality, I, I got you, but it's like, I, I understand you and me listening to you, which I don't really listen to nobody. I'm gonna tell you 100%. I'm, I'm more so, if I feel as though this is what's gonna go down, this is what's going down, you gotta really, you gotta really show me something that's working for me to listen to you. Like, or you gotta be, I just gotta really like, like you as a person, like a genuine person for me to listen to something that you're trying to tell me. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, if it's working, it's working. If it's not, it's not. But she tell me like, you need to, you need to spend more time. And that's why it's like it. And then I actually cut back on some of the stuff I was doing to spend more time with the kids. And it worked. So I'm like, okay, I listen, I listen to the mom sometimes. sometimes. Gotcha. Not a lot. Gotcha. <laughs> so moving forward, the next thing we do, we had two segments coming up. One called Spin the Block, one called Hidden Gems. I don't know if one stands out to you more than the other, but Spin the Block is when we have the opportunity to go back from anything we talked about before you came on or something we discussed in rapid fire questions or in your description. Is there anything that you would like to put a little bit more emphasis on that we uh, touched on already or something we may have not asked already that you want the viewers, the listeners, the people, your supporters to know? Um, I actually got something else in the works. I'm, I'm, I'm planning on something that was big. You driving in that? You, you let the people know now? Are you an exclusive? Or are you, you crazy thing about it? I haven't recorded music since 2000. I haven't dropped since 2021. Okay. I just, and that's crazy. I own the studio. I don't even record music because I'm more focused on the business side right now. Gotcha. Trying to get my money back. Gotcha. But I just linked up with my team. I am making music again right now. Hopefully, I drop on my birthday. And that is? February 16th. That's okay. hence why the 16th, of course. Gotcha. 16 everything. But um, I'm also got a new leg coming. GBO Sound Network. Okay. So it's going to be, big. it's going to be, it's going to be big. When you say network, is this like how Joe Buttons has a network? You have an umbrella of things that yeah, fall so, under yours? Yeah, so basically how GBO Sound, everything else is going to be the umbrella under that. So you got, I got GBO Kim, I got gotcha. Frenchie Bulldogs, um, GBO Sound Studios, but then G, uh, under GBO Network, there's going to be a lot of stuff, a lot of different type of content, okay. which is going to be like, I'll give y'all the names. I ain't telling nobody the names, I'm going to give y'all the names. Right, drop, but it's easy. Do it for the love of the We got flawless travels. I'm, I'm going to start vlogging on my trips now because a lot of people have been asking for that and travel spots and how to maneuver and that's a big areas. lane right there so, so, so i'm going to do that um flawless and the temptations that's <laughs> that's me and content with my kids okay <laughs> i like it and then so, i forget my own segments but it's more just yeah, know, just know it's a lot coming out of the right. yourself networks and so you drop some gems for real yeah, yeah like, i got people know what you got coming i got some stuff going and oh and i got a podcast coming too all right, all right. we shall feast podcast okay i like to eat we, yes we all this right. this will be a nice podcast too. Right. sound like we sliding into hidden gems yeah yeah look that's why i say it's a little bit of both so if you got something so yeah, yeah. i was gonna say what are the benefits and this is our hidden this is why i want to discover a hidden gem what are the benefits for you having a studio and a retail store under one roof? Like, what's what's the benefits and what's the challenges? Benefits is I ain't paying for multiple spaces, <laughs> but um, a lot of people come there just for the studio. Well, people that come for the studio, but then they see the clothing and, they end and then they they end up leaving with something. Gotcha. So it works because they get to come in and see something. But the the downside of it, the downside is. Of course, I don't allow smoking in it. And the main reason is because I have clothing in there. It doesn't mix. But a lot of artists don't want to record there because they can't smoke. Right. So you got a, a, policy, a policy where they can smoke outside? You can smoke out the front and out back. All you want all day. Hey, that ain't you, have, you have cameras around the whole place. With and the, big 50 inch screen with all the cameras on that you can watch. Artists, if you was going to Jay-Z studio or any big studio in the industry and they told you it was no smoking, do you think you would not go? You still gonna show up and you gonna follow their rules. Yep. And for the love of ownership topic that I wanna touch on is sometimes 
as black owners, we are constantly like riddled by our own people who don't want to follow the protocol or the business structure that's laid out to them. Whether it be discounts, showing up late, no communication. Come on, y'all. We got to show us as business owners more respect. Got it. That's, 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 that's a fact. Like I said, cut. Your product, the product is to me is like 40% of the battle. Customer service, 60%. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a lot of, I, I'm big on like, a lot of people, it's crazy because I just, I hired somebody, I just recently hired somebody. His name Nelly. Mm-hmm. Nice work, a kid, nice kid, he produced, he made music, and he worked my front desk now. So, I can tell people, like people can put order, like order from my store. They will not come get their order unless I'm there. Like it's not not that him because they don't know him yet. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's a simple fact they know the customer service that I give, so right. they only want to see me. Like I'm, I've been in different countries. People say I'm on my way. I say, oh, so and so is there. You can pick up your. Oh, no, I'll wait till you get back. What if I'm not coming back till next year? They gonna wait till next year. And I have orders in me from last year. Gotcha, gotcha. But like, it ain't ready to get resold. You know, because people asking for this stuff that y'all didn't order. I'm reselling. Us as as business owners, how do we train employees? Or help us not only just to match customer service, but to, to be like another you. Yeah, yeah work ethic as well. That's hard, and that's hard, and that's what everybody keep telling me. Cause my I'm devoting all my time today. Now I ain't got time much time for the kids because I gotta devote my time there because you want to keep it afloat. I want to keep, keep it. Afloat. I want to keep it afloat. Like people think, and people just think because you open the business that you have money. No, you don't. It takes years. <laughs> it takes years to takes actually years. see the money. So it's like, bro, I have to be here. But it's like, I also need to find a way to, like I always say, I want to be a part of it, but separate myself. Like, yes, I'm the face, people want to come in to see me, but you got to be able to, I want you to be welcome to my spot, whether I'm there or not. Right. So. No, that's, a, and I, I mean, at the end of the day, I think that's the goal for any owner is to build something that everything within that establishment is a trusted source. So. 100%. Anybody that's there is a representation of flaws. Anybody that you see with the with the gear on, with the logo, it's a representation of GBL. Yes. And that's the goal. Yes. Um, so moving into the next step, would you have anything inspirational that because we're about to wrap it up, is there anything inspirational that you want to leave anybody, like you said, man of many hats? It could be a message towards the people that want to train and own dogs. It could be towards the people that want to possibly one day own a studio or hiring people, mm-hmm. just being a boss and being an owner. It could be the people that's in more the healthcare field. Mm-hmm. What inspirational message can you give to someone that wants to wear multiple hats or to focus on one path of ownership? I guess it's a couple of different things. I would say, one, be patient because everything, just because it worked for me this way, that don't mean it's going to be fast for you to do it that way. Um, always remember, it's not about like, the audience is always about who your audience is. So you know you have to market to who's rocking with you. You market to them. You don't go outside to market to other people. They're gonna follow regardless. It's a follow and lead the world. So and just be yourself. And if you if you do something, you want it to be fun. Like you don't wanna you don't wanna go get work somewhere or get a job that feels like a job because you're never gonna wanna be that, you're never gonna prosper. You want to go somewhere where you see it as fun. So gotcha. I enjoy doing this. Like if you if you open a business, you want it to really be something you enjoy doing because you're gonna get tired of it. Facts. Facts. It's been a pleasure, my brother. I'm gonna let Sel uh, ask his last question. If you got any other words before I wrap it up, but it's been a pleasure on my behalf to have you on. Thanks. You're an inspiration, man, for young people and for older people because I'm older than you. But everything I see you do is things that I can add to my repertoire and things uh, in my journey. So I'm appreciative and thank you for being. Thank you, yeah, and, I, and I follow you too. You know, I'm like, not you know, I ask you about like yeah, your son. So, it's so it's I, 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 my youngest son, he has been tested, but that's yeah. what they're saying, autistic. Yeah. So I'm like. Okay. No, I appreciate and you. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So as we close out for the love of ownership, it's something that just doesn't come overnight. Ownership takes, you know, steps to get in there. It also takes communicating with people who've done it before you. And again, that's the purpose of doing it for the love. Like we've learned many things in this episode from Flawless about how to handle business, how to juggle business when you're doing multiple things. And I'm pretty sure it's many more things that we can learn from Flawless off the camera. But the main point is to connect with others, not just like you, but people who may have that work drive and that ethic that you want, even if it's a different profession. Like, you gotta mold yourself after those that have been before you, but also be creative and unique in your own space and the way you move. And uh, 
I just again thank you for coming through. Appreciate and, uh, you. You know we learned a lot today. Yeah, so man, for all our listeners, all our viewers, this is do it for the love. Everything is about love in our studio. Everything's about love with our show. But before you can show love or give it to anybody else, make sure you love on yourself. Thanks. Because that's most important. You cannot grow and prosper if you're not working on yourself, Daddy. So check that mirror before you hit the world. And show us love by hitting that like button, yes, hitting sir. the subscribe button. Yes, sir. And that's comments. important for us. All that. We need to network. Because that's a small that, podcast just getting started. The likes and the subscribes matter. And we want to get to that point. We want to make sure we feed the people correctly with this these gems and this, all of this professional talk, you know what I mean? So Absolutely. Show that love, hit that like button. Shout out to our studio, Atelier Baltimore. Shout out to all the Door for the Lovers. Shout out to everybody on our website, doorforthelove.com, for not T-H-E. Shout out to our special, special guest, Mr. Flawless Breezy, once again, my thank brother. You, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank thank you. you. And you know the vibes, man. Do it for the love. You know the vibes. We outside. Vibes only.